Sleep well, murder lovers. Mr. Sleep is currently streaming on Amazon Prime. It was written, edited, and directed by Robert Hollicks, who did a film called Applewood, and he's done some short films in the past. Check out his IMDb page for the full listen of his work. Written by Amy Reinchart Bailey as well. She had a hand in Applewood's production. And this centers around a deranged serial killer named Mr. Sleep, who is caught and put to death. Well, that's a wrap on that. I guess we don't have to worry about the rest of the film. And oh wait, no, that's not all. That's just in the little bit of the very beginning before we find out that Mr. Sleep isn't actually dead at all. He has come back to life with his black fingers and he is bound determined to sink his fingers and his fish hooks and his knife and every goddamn instrument he can come into contact with to rip asunder various people in any town USA, including this group of insomnia patients are just trying to go to sleep. They just want to go to sleep, go to night, night. Unfortunately, they take the big sleep. When Mr. Sleep decides to target them, because there is one particular person in this group that has a tie to somebody else that put him to death, and everybody involved must solve this mystery before they're all history of Mr. Sleep Tales. Woohoo! So that's your lot right there. It's a little bit Nightmare on Elm Street. It's a little bit Soul Survivors. It's a little bit, let's just take a bunch of horror cliches, humans tend to be in together, put them in a blender, spin them around to a beautiful oblivion, rendezvous, and here's Mr. Sleep for you. Okay, this is currently streaming on Amazon Prime. If you have an Amazon Prime account, then you can watch movies like this. I had not heard of this movie and decided to give it a shot. And look, I can take low budget, and even if the ideas have been done quite a bit before, okay, let's just, you know, allow a low budget horror movie to entertain us. So, the cast certainly tries, I will say that much. And there are the germs of a few ideas that could have worked here, but the plot is so simple yet incomprehensible at the same time. Like, you have story elements that could work if they were fleshed out at all, but character arcs just go from here to way over here all of a sudden, and the way people are killed off, it's like, okay, and then boom, boom, boom. It's like, it's like I, I don't know what in the world was going on. Like, there were certain scenes that were stretched out, and others, they were simply cut off right in the goddamn middle. I don't understand what was going on here, and I'm sorry. I know this is low budget. I know everybody tried. I hope everybody had a good time making it. I hope they had fun making it. And I wish nothing but the best for everybody in the future, but this movie was abysmal. I'm sorry, this was abysmal. The idea was there, even if it had been done before, but good grief. I also don't know <clears throat> why in the world the killer kind of looked like a Matrix uh, leather uh, jacket-clad General Grievous. That's actually what he reminded me of, just without the weird breathing. <laughs> Remember that? Remember that in that Star Wars movie, General Grievous? Remember that? That was weird. So anyway, yeah, actually, I thought he might have been a demonic Zoidberg. So we have the main character, Felicia, Claire Marie Lubick, or Lubick. Sorry if I got that wrong. She has a backstory. She has a dad that was a former judge that has retired since. <clears throat> and there's also a doctor named Dr. Victoria Chalice. Yes, the chalice. Drink from the chalice and you will be immortal. Yes. Played by Kate Daly. And from there, we basically have a movie where we get a few flashbacks <clears throat> as to Victoria's ties to this whole thing and how Mr. Sleep was bound, determined, basically, to pile up as many victims as possible. I mean, they just kept throwing numbers, throwing numbers, throwing numbers. It was a Goldberg-like streak at some points. There weren't that many, you know, uh, days in the week where he could have killed that many. I kid, I kid, of course. <clears throat> Whatever. He's a prolific serial killer that somehow got caught. But then Victoria has a little bit of ties there. <clears throat> and Felicia is... Uh, Felicia's there kind of as our heroine, I guess, in a sense. Why not? Every movie needs one. Look, I'm not going to lie to you, I, I didn't expect much from this movie, and this movie was just a mess. Like, <clears throat> low budget or not, there were, uh, this wasn't good, I'm sorry, this just wasn't. Like, the idea of, you know, somebody coming back from the dead and killing, in the name of revenge, or just because killers always kill, okay, I thought we, we might have got a shocker type moment. I'm not talking shocker like that, I'm talking <clears throat> the guy that got executed, and then could put himself through electrical outlets and other stuff like that. Nope, we don't get that. We just get a guy lumbering around, breathing like General Grievous, and just spouting nonsense. There, 
There's one point I'm going to talk about in the spoiler section where I thought they really should have started, uh, you know, the movie with that, and it might have kicked it off in a better way. But yeah, even though the cast tries, they're not very good, not very good at all. The uh, line readings actually made me think that they just went with the first take look again. Decent, if not, you know, <clears throat> familiar ground that this movie treads. But goddamn, goddamn, this is just, it's on Amazon. If you want to check it out, it is what it is. I'm going to get into spoilers. Let's just do it. Three, two, one, spoilers. So, uh, Robert Hollicks also plays a character named Dr. Loomis. No, really. I'm not kidding. And Felicia's best friend is named Ellen Strode. No, really. They even have an address that is the fictitious address of Michael Myers. Okay. Eh, whatever. I mean, after David Gordon Green's, uh, you know, Halloween ends, I, I really, quite frankly, think that we could just, you know, we, we can forgive anybody for trying to take a little bit from the corpse of Michael Myers and Halloween as a franchise. So, yeah, basically, we we, we get a, a delivery, we get like a pizza delivery can where the guy just races right up. I mean, I don't know what this camera shot was, but through the house, we see a news report, Mr. Sleep is being put to death. So he dead. He dead and not coming back, except he does. And, <clears throat> all right, we, we just, we get introduced to Felicia. She is playing video games. I don't know what the game is. <clears throat> Possibly something on Steam so they didn't have to pay for the rights. Maybe it's something one of the characters in the movie designed. It's so good for them. And she's listening. Suddenly she hears some weird animalistic growling. And then she gets attacked by an oily arm and everything. I don't know what the hell that was. Maybe it was the slime zombie from Return of the Living Dead Part 2. Is that the one that had the slime zombie in the beginning? Brains. And then just goes back to playing her video games. Good God. Good God. Maybe it was a waking nightmare. Maybe she's just losing her <coughs> remaining sanity because she can't sleep. So, yes, then we get basically a... Um, we basically have sleep attack uh, a coroner kill him kill him brutus beefcake style just put him to sleep much like brutus beefcake put everybody to sleep with his matches i did find it funny that this guy that was inspecting the corpse of a serial killer <laughs> turns his back on him and puts headphones on and then dies good good situational awareness there so <clears throat> um sleep gets out he Busts into a guy's place and is all general grievous like. I'm not even knocking the actor playing him. It's the voice choice. Like, I think that everybody did the best they could. Whether they were qualified to play the roles or not is subject to your taste. But he ends up killing some guy uh, who has a bunch of supplies in his, in his uh, garage by hooking him up to a bunch of fishing lines and rings and fishing hooks and then evidently rips them apart or something his wife finds him while he's being lowered uh, lifted and low uh, lifted up and lowered you know on this weird thing i don't know what the fuck it was it was like just some little like garage lift if you need to get like two feet off the ground um yeah we get introduced felicia she falls for a guy named glenn who's played by alec james <coughs> or yeah, I believe it's Alec James. If I got the names wrong, I do apologize. I don't mean any disrespect. This movie kind of almost put me to sleep several times because it was really, really boring. Really boring. So we go through Sunday, Monday, Tuesday 2, Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays, uh, Fridays through. Saturday, we are almost through, and Sunday, thank fuck it's done. Or maybe they were done by uh, Saturday. I actually don't know. So <clears throat> there's a podcast that has somebody that is clearly Dr. Victoria. I'm just going to call her that because it just sounds snooty. And she is talking about all these, you know, these dark murderers and all this murder podcast stuff and everything. And we're diving deep into the stuff they don't want you to know. And it turns out she interviewed uh, Mr. Sleep. I almost said Dr. Sleep. It's a hobby for him. <clears throat> Dr. Victoria interviewed him three years ago. She also was one of the ones basically able to analyze him a lot while he was in jail. Um, he also wants to know what memories taste like, and he somehow can eat people's memories. That, that, that is categorically impossible. It's fine. And, yeah, 
It turns out that Dr. Uh, Victoria may actually have a fan. Oh, he a fan, he a fan, he a fan. I bet you didn't expect that reference. Near did I. So, Glenn, <coughs> and Glenn keeps showing up. It turns out Glenn actually has a bit of a dark past that we find out with literally 15 minutes left in the movie. 15, maybe 10. And he <coughs> is, you know, talking to Felicia. They barely acknowledge each other in high school, even though they, I guess, liked each other. Maybe. This was so poorly fleshed out. And... <coughs> It's a quick romance. Felicia, by the way, is agoraphobic because her mom died. Her mom died, I, I don't know, maybe her mom tripped and, you know, uh, fell into a vat of acid. Maybe she fell into a giant pot like that cook in sleepaway camp. But the judge, by the way, that put, um, that put sleep to death is, which just sounds so stupid saying it like that, is Felicia's father. So it turns out he's tied to this. That is why people in the group are being offed. Bree suddenly gets killed. This Zoom call thing goes nowhere because suddenly, after one Zoom call, Bree's dead, and then others die. Um, yeah, others just die in silly ways. They get weird writing, like Norse Viking mythology stuff on their face and numbers on their forehead like it's the fucking Frighteners, except they're not carved. It's just makeshift ink and everything because he's tied to this mythology where he can live forever, I guess. I'm sure there was a deeper meaning to this goddamn movie, but it's like they just kept chucking ideas. There's like, okay, something will stick. Please let something stick. So, yeah, Helen Strode dies. Get it. Get it. See, Laurie Strode didn't die until we got to Halloween Resurrection. Let us never speak of that film again. <clears throat> the doctor basically took some brain tissue. She told the judge and couldn't take brain tissue while he was dead, so I had to take some tissue from him to create a serum. To create a serum to do what? To make other people serial killers with blackjack and hookers? To prevent people from becoming serial killers? To add it to A1 barbecue sauce? None of these scenes get fleshed out properly. Any ideas that could work are just instantly stamped and hammered and pounded down. <sighs> so yes, basically it comes down to <clears throat> a few people surviving. I'm not going to get into too many details there because none of it really matters. The judge, by the way, gets killed in a hilarious way. Sometimes he's walking, sometimes he's on a cane. This cop gets killed, the judge gets killed. This is right after, by the way, uh, the dad tells Glenn, I know all about you, Dr uh, reckless driving, man uh, you know, involuntary manslaughter. We find this out literally with 12 minutes left. We find this out with 12 minutes left. Who is pacing this movie? Who's pacing this? We have so many lengthy scenes of Felicia wandering around the goddamn house and doing all this and other people do doing things for guests. Suddenly, grievous sleep would show up. And he would attack and kill. Which might be effective if we gave a shit about any of these characters, but we don't. Anyway, so suddenly, you know, the doctor's here. Chalice gets her hand cut off. Dr. Victoria is without her hand. She has one hand, though. Glenn manages to actually beat down um, Mr. Sleep enough and then somehow doesn't go for the killing blow, gets knocked out, gets, you know, beaten up, and then he dies in Felicia's arms tonight. It must have been something she did. But then she goes on a warbath and starts beating up sleep just dives on him dives on him from the steps and could have instantly gone for the killing blow but didn't ran outside <coughs> agoraphobic no crap oh no and she was all ready to go to this meadows place with glenn that he was saying with his final breath then she goes out agoraphobia kicks in and sleep finds her and is laughing ah ha ha then she takes one of the fish hooks and somehow stabs him in the eye despite the fact he had her pinned down and had at least 100 pounds on her but then she breaks off a rake and gets behind him and stabs him through the neck in a very unconvincing way, I might add. And then, then he's dead. And then the cops are checking on her. And then we get a cool storybook, arty, end credits thing. Well, we, do, we have Mr. Sleep doing a narration, like a storybook narration, which... Went on a little bit long, I will say that much. I was like, okay, this is effective, and then it kept going, and it kept going, and it kept going. Had they started with the storybook thing and done that, and done the narration, 
I'm not saying the movie would have been saved, but at least it would have been a better start, like they did with Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 1. Yes, I still have to watch the second one at some point when the price comes down. And then we cut back to the interview with the doctor. And he says, well, I'll come back because I always come back. I think I let them think that I got away or they got away, but I always come back. Don't you dare do a sequel. Please don't. Move on to something else. Move on to something better, please. There have to be better things than this. The sad thing, this isn't even going to crack the top 10 or maybe even the top 20 of the worst things I've seen this year because there was effort to an extent. But God, the execute. I'm sorry. This is terrible. Terrible. Not good. It's on Amazon Prime if you want to check it out. Look, I wish nothing but the best for the cast and crew. I really do. I'm not knocking them, but this movie is not good. F. Agree, disagree with what I said? Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ricklin. I'll see you soon.